Oh no! The black hole! Mark! 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 Yeah? Hey, can I borrow some milk? Sherry once again forgot to get it at the store. Uh, yeah, sure, it's in the fridge. They got sucked into the black hole because of the intense gravity at the horizon! Uh, it's in the fridge? <laughs> oh, it's a uh, film class. I didn't know you were taking a film class. No, I'm not. Uh, I have a class, Astronomy 101. I have some homework assignment on event horizons. And you're watching this? Well, it answered my question. It told me that the event horizon is the point at which the gravity becomes so strong that it sucks you in and you can't escape. <sighs> no, no, no. That's preposterous. The event horizon is the hypersurface in space-time surrounding the black hole, at which point all light-light paths, and hence all paths in the forward light cones of particles within the horizon, are warped so that the particles geodesic inevitably and invariably go into the singularity. Right. I forget you work on this stuff. Not exactly. I actually work on black hole microstates in type 2b supergravity. <laughs> Isabella, what's taking so long? We need the milk for mac and cheese and I refuse to have ramen again. I'm, I'm teaching Mark about the principles behind event horizons. Oh boy. Mark, are you okay? I think I crossed Isabella's event horizon. <laughs> event horizons aren't special from the point of view of an infalling observer in classical general relativity, and for a supermassive black hole, they are far enough away from the singularity that the tidal forces don't suck you in. It's just that the radial coordinate becomes time-like, and the time coordinate space-like at the horizon in the Schwarzschild solution, so the light cones tip over and all time-like geodesics end in the singularity. Izzy, stop. He's not going to learn Einstein's theory of gravity in his pajamas. Why not? I did. <laughs> Come to think of it, I learned it in my Wonder Woman costume. Okay, here, look. Grab the end of this. Here we go again. Okay, so Einstein taught us that space and time should really be thought of as one fabric of the universe called space-time, like this blanket. So everything that happens in the universe kind of plays out on this. But rather than a two-dimensional blanket, the universe is four-dimensional. So the usual three dimensions of space plus the dimension of time. So the amazing thing is, is that space-time, like this blanket, can move. And it warps and bends around the stuff, like planets, stars, you and me, that are on it. So take this popcorn, for example. It doesn't have much mass, so it doesn't warp the blanket. But something with heavier mass, like this baseball, something like this baseball has enough mass to significantly warp the blanket. So this would be like the sun in our solar system. It's so massive, it actually warps the space-time around it. That's what gravity actually is, the curvature of space-time. The orbits of the planets are just geodesics on the manifolds. Isabella, you aren't helping. Sherry. <laughs> oh, so what happens if I take, say, a marble and roll it along when the blanket is flat? It rolls in a straight line? Right. But when the marble gets close enough to feel the gravitational field of the baseball... Then the straight path curves. Exactly, and it starts to orbit. Of course, here the marble experiences friction, and so it slows down and falls in. In space, Earth doesn't encounter any real friction, so it just keeps orbiting the sun. Huh. Well, that's actually kind of neat. So what does all that stuff have to do with black holes and event horizons and hyper... What hyper surfaces. Called? Yeah, those. Well, let's say that instead of a baseball, we have something really, really heavy, like a bowling ball. That would warp the blanket so much that it would tear a hole through it. Or... should work. If I press on the blanket with this pen, you see how it curves really steeply so that it makes this narrow throat that ends in the point where this pen tip is? Yeah. Is that supposed to be the singularity? Yes, you're catching up. So the pinpoint of the pen represents the zero size singularity of the black hole, and the really steeping curving of the blanket is the throat of the black hole. The point where the gravitational effects are really strong and the tidal forces and the ones that pull you apart are extreme. But look way out here. Here we see the gravitational effects are small, so small that a marble rolling by won't notice them. In the case of a supermassive black hole, like the one at the center of our Milky Way, the event horizon would be somewhere way out here. It's not strong gravity that creates the point of no return. So then what prevents this stuff from escaping? Hmm, how best to explain this? <laughs> 
allow me. Space-time is labeled by four coordinates, x, y, and z for the spatial dimensions, and a t for time. We need a way to measure the distance between two points in space-time, so we use a mathematical object called a metric. The important distinction is that the time component, t, has a different sign. Just bear with her, Mark. I think I know where she's going, and it'll make sense. Of course it makes sense. This quantity can behave in one of three ways. It can be positive, it can be negative, or it can be zero. Which corresponds to saying the distance between two space-time points are space-like, time-like, or light-like. The fastest anything can travel is at the speed of light, so the closest two points can be, in the sense of how fast it can be reached, is if they are light-like separated, because light travels in such a way that this is zero. If you're moving slower than the speed of light, then the distance is negative and the points are time-like. If you were to move faster than the speed of light, then it would be positive, and we call that space-like. As of right now, we know of nothing that travels faster than the speed of light. That's really more just a theoretical discussion. Well, meaning that if two points are space-like separated, then you can never reach the second point from the first. Alright, I'm confused. How can a distance be negative? Well, it's not distance in space, but in space-time. Let me put it this way. So let's take a distance x in time. Remember that distance equals velocity times time, where c is the speed of light. So something traveling at the speed of light would make these lines. So if you are here in the space and time, then to reach a point along this line, you would have to travel at the speed of light. These are light-like separated from you. To reach a point that is beyond this line, you must travel faster than the speed of light. These are space-like separated from you. To reach a point in between these lines, you can travel at a speed less than the speed of light, and these are time-like separated. This is the light cone. I think my brain is space like separated from you. <laughs> but let's go with it. Okay, so this is you in the present. This is your future, and this is your past. However, when you approach the event horizon, the light cone starts to tilt. The event horizon is the point at which every possible path in your future moves toward the singularity. So everything that was once ahead of you spatially is now ahead of you in time. So since it's in your future, it is inevitable, and that is why you can't escape from the horizon, and you have to fall into the singularity and be destroyed. Is that the only way out of this conversation? <laughs> Mark! I'm just kidding. It's the way I'd want to go, really. Why would you want to go that way? You'd effectively be spaghettified. The tidal forces, they just pull and stretch your body so it's so narrow, you'd be... You'd be spaghetti! It would be extremely painful. She doesn't get out much, does she? Not really. She spends most of her time on research. Life of a grad student. My research is so interesting, though. Hold, Let me... hold on, Izzy. Let's let Event Horizon sink in first. There's no need to blow his mind even more today. Thanks, Cher. Maybe we can talk about it when I'm drunk. <laughs> Would you like some mac and cheese? I think I've earned it. The ground is too strong! We aren't gonna make it! Oh, good lord! How many times can I- Isabella!